And welcome to another episode of Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. I'm so excited that you're joining us this week, and it's certainly an exciting week to be here. We have an awesome program planned for you. Uh, But before we get started, I uh, just want to give some updates on what's going on. And for those of you that have never heard this show before, that are listening, my name is Daniel Duvall, and I am the founder and president of Bride Ministries. Now, this is a nonprofit organization that we've started, runs the radio show. We also give assistance to overseas missions, and our vision, ultimately, is to uh, promote unity in the body of Christ and assist in the creation and development of sheep nations. And I want to make those of you that are listening to this program aware, this isn't something that's just a hobby for us. Uh, we are very serious about what we are doing for God. And if you are being touched by what we are doing, we confidently ask, uh, you can totally get involved. Uh, by donating towards what we are working towards. And of course, if you want more information, you want to get a hold of me, that's fine. And uh, furthermore, where do you get a hold of us? Our website is www.bridemovement.com. And I uh, I exhort you that are listening to check out the website regardless of, you know, what what you're looking for as far as uh, partnership or so forth. Our website is full of all kinds of free information, links, to the archives of this program, we have the blog that we run, uh, books that I've written, videos, audio files, uh, other interviews I've done from other shows, and so forth. Uh, there's a lot there, so definitely a resource you want to check out. Uh, I am the author of Noah's Ark and the End of Days, and also Wounded by Leadership. Those two books are available just about wherever books are sold. Make sure you get a, a, a look at those. Um, Noah's Ark and the End of Days deals a lot with eschatology, also God's plan for his church in these last days. What, what, what does he want to do? And what are the roles of fallen angels? What, what can we expect as the last days events unfold? Wounded by Leadership, and this is something really exciting for those of you that are listening, because I wrote this book, Wounded by Leadership, to address the issues of what we encounter when we as Christians or um, whatever have you, submit to injurious spiritual leadership. It can be very difficult. It can be very painful. It can cause us to feel rejected uh, and and, and just very defeated. It it, it can make us um, want nothing to do with the Christian faith in certain cases. And so I wrote a book to help those that have been through these kinds of situations overcome them. However, it doesn't just stop at the book because... We've written the book. The book is available. This coming month, in the month of April, we are going to be doing an entire month-long series on Wounded by Leadership. And I want to make the announcement to go forth. This is not going to be a month reserved for those that are specialists, those that are ministers, those that are uh, you know, very accomplished in as far as what God has called them to do. This is going to be a month for you, for the average person, for those that are listening, have listened to this program, um, followed our blog, different things, that have a story that needs to be told. What I want to do is shed the light of truth on the issue of spiritual abuse in the Church. Um, let the stories be told, and let the truth go forth regarding God's ability to heal these situations, to restore these situations. And, and so... The entire month is going, I'm going to be uh, taking submissions as far as if you, you want to be featured on Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall, get a hold of me. You can go through my website, www.bridemovement.com, or just contact me directly at bridemovement at gmail.com. Send me a name, contact information. What's your story? I'm going to be picking stories, and those stories that get picked to get featured throughout the month as far as uh, Wounds by Leadership go. Those stories are going to be uh, receiving a free signed copy of my book, Wounded by Leadership. And so definitely some incentive there to get on board with what we're doing. I think it's going to be very exciting. Uh, For those of you that are calling in, want to call in during the program, 718-766-4160. Again, that's 718-766-4160. And now, 
I want to introduce to you our guest for this week. And I'm very excited about our guest because he's going to be addressing uh, s- certain topics and issues that we really haven't gotten to on Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. His name is Kevin Middleton, and I met him at a conference this past week. Very exciting conference, by the way. Uh, and <clears throat> today, you would meet Kevin, and, and you, you would be impressed and say, wow, this guy, he really has his stuff together. Years ago, you might have met him serving a life sentence. Kevin comes from a difficult and, uh, frankly, troubled background, and his story deals with drugs, it deals with prison, it, it deals with violence, and it deals with the radical redemption of Jesus Christ, which is why as I met him and got to listening to all that he had to say, his background story and the work of God in his life, I said, i got to have you on the program. People have to hear what you've been to, where you've been, and how God has worked transformation in your life. Kevin has uh, since being completely restored and had life totally turned around by Jesus, pursued his theological education at Christian Transformational Psychotherapy Pastoral Institute in New York City. There he was ordained as an apostle senior pastor of A New Life Ministry. He's also a Christian psychotherapist for youth and families, and he's presently under the leadership and guidance of Apostle Richard Reeves and is mentored by Apostle Lewis and Bishop Carl Jenkins. Now, his website is www.anewlifeministry.com. Kevin, thanks so much for joining us. How are you doing, Daniel? It's Uh, so good to have you on the program, Kevin. It's a blessing to be here. You know, when God opens doors, you know, you got to walk through them. Amen. And, uh, you know, I... Thanks for taking the time. You know, you've got to be with us for the next two hours. So, you know, get comfortable. Um, man, <sighs> your story is incredible, man. It, it, it's just absolutely incredible. And what I want to do, because I'm an organized person, I, you know, I usually go about things in a systematic way as possible so people that are listening uh, have an easy time following. So what I really want to do is just kind of get started in the beginning. Where were you born? What kind of environment were you born into? And how did that impact the initial course that your life was directed on? Well, I was, I was born in New York and um, in Harlem, which is Manhattan. And, uh, you know, I went to school. I grew up in the projects. And through the course of my life, I, I wanted to be somebody. I wanted to be recognized. And... The only ones that was being recognized was drug dealers. Everybody else wasn't recognized at all. You know, you had teachers that wanted to teach, but they wasn't recognized. And I kind of wanted to be the star. And following them, you know, caused me to lose focus. It's not like I didn't come from a Christian background. You know, I knew all about church. But I wanted the stars. I wanted the glitter. I wanted the fame. You know, and uh, from there, I just, I'm the type of person who, once I see what I want, I go after it. I get close to the people who are doing it. I, I surround myself with that type of atmosphere. And I just emulate what they do. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I become what they become or what they are. Hmm. Wow. So you got started. You were born into the projects, man. Well, for those of uh, us that are listening and are going to hear your story, what was it like from your perspective to live in the projects? I mean, you know, they, there's people that are going to hear this program. They grew up middle class. They grew up upper class. I mean, their their, their minimum square footage on their house was three thousand at the least. What was it like? You know, um, in the projects, you is families moving into an apartment, and uh, we had three buildings, and everybody was kind of family. Mm-hmm. You know, my father, 
he could scorn or he can uh, correct somebody else's parent, um, somebody else, excuse me, somebody else's kid, you know, he would uh, take care of the situation that the kid was in, whatever disrespectful way the kid reacted in, and then take him to his his parents, and then his parents would take care of him. You know, um, it was a close-knitted family, you know, but everybody's trying to struggle to get out. And it was hard because the devil has created a system that we thought worked. And, you know, no matter how much you get into that systematic way of living, the deeper it seems that uh, you get into it. What I mean is the father, the, the more you go after it, the deeper it, it controls you in the way that you can't be, uh, you can't get out of it. It's like a whirlwind. Okay. You know, you win it and you're just trying to survive. Wow. Um, and, you know, my mother, you know, my mother, you know, mm -hmm. she used to work in the prison system. Mm -hmm. You know, she was going to school to become, uh, you know, a judge. Wow. And uh, somewhere in the course of that, she was diagnosed with a tumor in her brain. Oh, my God. And, yeah, you know, and I, I'm, I'm young, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, she's going into the hospital and she's coming out and she's going to be fine. You know, she went into the hospital mm -hmm. and, you know, I went to the hospital to see her. You know, I never saw my mo my mother with her hair shaved. You know, mm -hmm. my mother had a nice amount of hair. I didn't see the hair, you know, and it was like that wasn't my mother anymore. And as time progressed, she never recovered mm. because back then they didn't have uh, what it took to... Uh, fix the situation mm -hmm. like they have medicine and uh, therapy and stuff that you can go through now that if this would happen to my mother right now she would be herself only thing she has to do is you know um, go to the hospital get the operation and you know uh, she would have recovered but because it was so far back you know it, it they didn't have the the know-how so what, uh, what ultimately happened with your mom? You know, so uh, after she, she, she came out, you know, she, she just wasn't herself. Oh, she wow. was slower. Um, she would kind of forget things at times. She needed my sister to take care of her. So mm -hmm. my sister, she was raising me because my father had died. Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, and he died right in front of my building. So every time I would walk out of the building, it was kind of like a reminder. That's where my father passed. You know, I was able to look out the window and saw him right there laid out on the floor. Oh my gosh. You know, and it, you know, being young, I didn't understand the impact that it was going to have on my life. And looking mm. back now, it was mm -hmm. just a seed that the devil was trying to do to uh, get me to abort or to release the call that God had on my life. Wow. And, and if, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what was the cause of, of your dad's death? My father was, you know, he was a good man. He uh -huh. took care of his business regarding taking care of his family. Mm -hmm. He was a working man. You know, he even created... Um, an extra job where he had a, a carpet machine and he would go around to people's houses and he would do, you know, side jobs, cleaning their carpet, their windows and so on and so forth. You know, it was a, it could have been a, a, a dominant business, mm. um, but it didn't happen that way. And uh, he, he drunk a lot. Oh. You know, I don't know, you know, the pressure. Sometimes I would, I would try to hide the, the liquor Mm -hmm. from him he mm. would put it in one place i would find it and i would hide it and um he knew that i you know i moved it but i never told him where i moved it 
You know, if I had to get a beating, I get a beating just so he doesn't uh, destroy himself. Oh gosh! You know, and that's I don't. I'm not a drinker at all. Uh huh. You know, I never was, and I always stayed away from it because I seen what it, you know, how it destroyed my father. Oh my gosh! And um, he went to the hospital because he had fell out before, but it was across the street, and they told him to stop drinking but he was so far deep into drinking that it was so it was hard he started going to church he became a deacon you know but the drinking just wouldn't stop and they told him because I had talked to my aunt some time ago and she told him you know uh, she told me that my aunt said it's going to kill you mm. if you don't um if you don't stop, you know, so, um, uh -huh. uh, that's where he, he, uh, that was his downfall. You know, like yeah. Samson had, uh, Delilah. Yeah. That, that was his Delilah. Wow. And you know, I'm, that's, you know, that's it was so a heart sad. attack. You know, it was a heart attack right in front of the building. That's what it was. Oh my gosh. A main, uh, I think they say a main heart attack. You know, I'm, I'm reminded in, in, in this moment about, you know, w one of the things that the Bible says is that be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit of God. And, and I, I just want to interject at this moment in your story before we continue, uh, j just to take a sidebar and minister to those that are listening. <laughs> if you drink a lot, <laughs> hear the voice of your children in, in the voice of our guests today. Hear the impact of your decisions echoed through what you have just heard. It, it, you know, there, there are alternatives and there is deliverance in Christ and there is deliverance from addiction in general. I encourage those of you that are listening, if what he's just said has touched your life, let it let it touch your life. Don't don't just hear this and brush it to the side like you've been brushing other uh, <laughs> direct messages to you aside. Listen to this. Take heed and know uh, there is a better way. My God, uh, Kevin. Continuing with your your story here. Uh, th th I mean, this is this is really hard. I mean, from early on, devil shows you your dad dead. It, I mean, and that just seems to speak so heavy. And you, and you said that, you know, uh, you, your mom has now come back from the hospital and she's not quite what, so, what, the same way she was. Um, so what, what kind of began to transpire? You know, um, my father began to work and I can, you know, my, my father loved my mother. You know, he had five kids from her, you know, um, and... I knew, I know now the pressure that was on his life because mm -hmm. someone who you love, you don't want them, you don't want to see them go through, you know, debilitating or, or situations that just saps all the strength out of them, you know, so I can imagine what my father was going through. Yes. You no, know, and that probably was his escape route. You know, and then in the course of him finding, you know, um, getting going back to church, you know, it was like he was too tossed to and fro by the wine and the feelings. He didn't know mm -hmm. how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I seen the pressure that my father went through. I seen my mother when my mother was in her uh, before the the operation, um, my father would, uh, they would argue at times, mm -hmm. you know, and my father was, he was a jealous type. Mm. So what my father did, uh, my mother stayed out to make it seem as if she was with somebody else, but she wasn't, she was right upstairs. And when she came in one night, 
my father was so heated and uh, disturbed that, you know, he, he caused the argument and he cut my mother uh, on her leg with mm. an old knife. And my mother used to run track, so she ran all the way to the hospital. But, oh you know, I, re I remember that. You know, I remember my mother, me, hanging out of her leg. Wow. You know, and I would like, I, I would say, how, if you love my mother, why would you, how can you do this? Mm. But I, 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 I can bear witness that anger will, will drive you to that point. You know, and the Bible says that, um, with Cain and Abel, yeah, that he comforted himself, intending to kill his brother. Mm. You know, so when you hurt somebody, it kind of brings a sense of comfort. I got even, but that's not that's not really the case. That's just a lie from the devil. You mm. know, um, so but they stayed yeah. together. They stayed together no matter what. They they stayed together. You know, she might have kicked him out for a night or two, but he he's back home. He's mm -hmm. working. He's taking care of what he has to take care of with the kid. He's, his presence is known. And we knew, don't mess with daddy. Mm. You know, do what you're supposed to do. And that was it. But once he died, you know, it was just me, my sister, and my nephew. Because my parents... Uh, they embrace my nephew because my I believe my sister wasn't capable of taking care of him. So me and him grew up like brothers. What I saw, he saw. You know, but he dealt with his a little different because as a young kid, you can wonder why would your mother leave you? Even though they leave you with your, your grandparents and your grandparents, they treated him the way they treated me. Mm. They bought me a coat, they bought him a coat. They bought me a pair of sneakers, they bought him a pair of sneakers. If I did something wrong, I got beat for it. If he did something wrong, he got beat. It was it, it was no favoritism. It was just you this is what this is the way we we gonna raise you. You know, and um so uh my nephew he he went away. He stayed in jail. He started doing time since he was like 15 years old. Oh, my gosh. You know, and, you know, he had he had issues that he was dealing with, and he stayed silent. He never said anything to nobody. He was always quiet. Even mm. when my father died, he loved my father. He didn't yeah. shed one tear. Wow. So I, I can imagine how much anger that was in him it's in that that internalization is a killer yes it is that internalization is a killer and i you know i i i can jump in and chime in on this one because i know that when i was uh growing up there were several things going on in my life that i began to become very angry about a lot of things but i kept quiet about it i i, I just let it build it become like it's like a cancer and it eats yes. It eats you. It eats. It eats your conscience. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. it, it eats your judgment. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, it eats your morals, and it it spreads. <laughs> oh my gosh! So yes, um, I could see how that excessive could lead him to that path. So uh, so so how? Uh, give give us an age range here. Um, about how old are you when all this is happening? You know, your mom's coming back. Uh, your dad's dead. About how old were you? I think I'm about thirteen. Wow, I think about thirteen. Uh huh. You know, um, father, he he did the best he can he could, and uh, I, you know, a heart attack. You know, a heart attack is is pressure. Mm hmm. You know, that's like one of them old crock pots. Uh, you put water in a balloon or you put air in a balloon. It's so much that the balloon can take. There's a capacity that's that has a, a limit to it. Mm. So once you start to put more than the balloon or the crock pot can take, that's why it has that little whistle when it's boiling. 
Mm. The balloon, it just busts. Mm -hmm. And I believe it that's what happened to him. Because yeah. he was in the hospital before. They told him you, you have to stop drinking and you have to do this and that. He stopped, but he didn't completely stop. So it didn't take hold fast. It took a little bit more time for him to uh, get to the stage of, you know, the main heart attack. You know, it's like it's like sin. If it is sin, if you don't stop, you know, it's like Cain and Abel. God told him that uh, if you don't, he says, he brings him, he says, what's, ma what's the matter with you? Why is your continence falling? He says, if you do well, we are right. But if you don't do well, then sin lies at the door. And it's, it wants to rule over you. It wants to control you. Amen. You know, and if we don't allow the spirit of God to, you know, clean the slate and help us get out of it. Because in the flesh, you can't get out of it. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul says all things is lawful, but all things is not edifying. He said all things is lawful but I won't be brought under the power of any. Mm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to let anything control me, but the spirit of God and God himself. Amen. Good word, brother. Now coming back. All right. So, so you're 13 here. Now your dad, your dad's a, looking back. Okay. Lo looking back at this time in your life, all this has yeah. transpired. I, I mean, you're growing up in the projects, you, you, you see in some, I mean, your dad obviously had some good qualities. He, he, he stuck around. He was a dad. He took yes. care of his family. Um, yes, he did. But, but, but there, was, there was abuse and uh, there, there was, uh, you know, the alcohol. But now, after all of that, now he is dead. And, and you are now 13, fatherless. Looking back, how do you see that impacting your life, that fatherlessness, that that void that has just formed i had uh i had uh a brother-in-law mm -hmm. you know my father was molding him in a sense you know before you wasn't just going to marry some uh one of his daughters and not have standards you know he w he went into the army you know, he was in the army. He he had kids by my by my sister. He raised the kids. He was a phenomenal father. And I took a hold of him in a sense. And but he did the best he could, but he's not your father. Hmm. And you know that. And there was times he mentioned that to me. Hmm. You know, I'm 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 a father figure. But I know I'm not your father. And it's different. It's, it's not the same. Wow. You know, he did not the best right. he could. You know, he was even, when my father was alive, he wanted to take me out of that environment and take me to Texas or Germany where he raised his kids at. And I mm. was just going to be like one of his kids. He was trying mm. to save me. But my father was saying, this is the youngest one. You can take one of the other ones, but not this one right here. Mm. You know, and uh, I, st I stayed in New York, and you know, I, I, uh, it was it was a little it was rough. Wow. So, um, not having a father figure what causes me caused me to latch on to the drug dealer because the drug dealer mm. is like he's like a father. Wow. You know, he he has his family or his his troops and he takes care of them and he, you know, they, they working for him and you know, it's, it's, it's a family. Mm. I'm going to pause you right there. Uh, Kevin, uh, we had, okay. We had a caller, um, but it looks like they have now, uh, hung up. Uh, whoever was calling from a six, uh, area code beginning with a six, um, call back in. We'll bring you on if you're still listening. Um, Anyway, lost the caller, so 
we're going to continue on with this. That's so powerful right there, what you just said. Because what you just said is that in, 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 the, in, the, in the void of your now fatherless situation, you latched on to the drug dealer because their system is set up like a family. And his position becomes a counterfeit for the real thing, the real father. And, and I, I, I just can't help but look at how, how drugs just, I mean, it's so prevalent in communities that are fatherless, fatherless communities. And it's almost always you will find lots of drug abuse, alcohol abuse. I mean, and what you said there, it, it, just, it, it just hits home. It just hits home. So, what, 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 I mean, how did this happen? How did this transpire? You are, uh, you know, you're 13 now. Uh, did, you, did you already know who the drug dealers were? Did you, it was, was yeah, it was a school? When you, I mean. One thing, when you in, in live in a project, everybody knows who everybody is. Mm. You know who the drug dealer is. You know who um, the teachers are. You know the. The good mothers, you know the bad mothers, you know the criminals, you know them, you know them all. Um, I had a, a guy who um, that was like a cousin to me. He was affiliated with that type of activity. Yeah. So one thing about me, if I see somebody that's doing what I'm doing, what I want to do, mm-hmm. and they kind of good at it, mm-hmm. I'm going to get real close to you. I'm gonna be your right. best friend. Okay, you know? we have a we, we have a caller in now. As a matter of fact, uh, it looks like we have two callers. So, uh, for those of you that are calling in, uh, I have a six four six area code calling in. I also have a three one five six four six. You're up first. Um, what's your name and what's going on? Hello. Hello. You are live on Discovering the Truth yeah. with Dan Duvall. Hey, how are you? I'm, I'm wonderful. How my are name you? is uh, my name. I'm good. I'm good. My name is Apostle Reeves, and uh, I'm I'm uh, an associate of Mr. Middleton's there. That's my ah, spiritual uh, father. He, he is, uh, he is the real deal. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I, I, I I was just calling because sometimes, uh, for lack of a better way to say it, we have people. Faking the funk, mm-hmm. you know they they are trying to be somebody they're not to try mm-hmm. to get people to believe in them so that they could follow them. And this gentleman is just being who he has been as he evolves to be who God wants him to be. Mm-hmm. So his testimony and his story is true and real and full of power. Amen. And I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, in a meeting, but I needed to make sure that I stepped away from my meeting and called in because I needed to make the statement that he's not just speaking just because he's on the radio. He's speaking because he has a heart for people to understand what it is to come from one place to another. So his, his, his message is real. Yeah, that's quite a word. Uh, thank you so much for calling in and validating his ministry, sir. Yes, and you gentlemen, have a good night. Ted, keep your head up, sir. I will. I will, Sergeant. <laughs> All right, we got another caller in. Uh, have a good night. Have a good night, Apostle. Yes. Uh, we have another gentleman calling yes. in from uh, 315 Area Code. You are now live on Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? I am lovely, thank you. Is this Dan Duvall? This is, you are talking to Dan Duvall, yes. And uh, our Hi, guest Dan is... Duvall. My name is Ange- my name is Angela Aldridge. Uh-huh. Um, PK is, is is my pastor. Oh, um, great. Has been yes. Um, I'm um, let me turn let me turn. I've got your television program on right now, so I'm kind of really confused because it's not saying too much. So I don't know if, if I'm speaking to you or not because I heard something else going on. Um, <laughs> don't worry, you're you are live. <laughs> I uh, oh that's fine. 
Um, yes, I'm Angela Aldridge. Um, pastor PK um, 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 was a pastor of mine. Well, in, and still reigns as a pastor. Mm-hmm. Um, um, he. Um, it'll be almost three years ago um, this coming summer, and um, and I don't know. I keep hearing it on my. T- should I turn my uh, computer off? If that makes you more comfortable. Yeah, because I don't mean. Am, am I hearing? Am I gonna hear myself later? Because I really don't care about hearing myself. <laughs> you will hear okay, yourself. No, okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but um, um, Pastor um, PK and his wife, um, Minister Alicia, um, actually, um, I was I had just moved um, as a breakup with my husband and mm-hmm. moved to Auburn, and um, I happened to be walking by um, this building that I had no idea where I was walking. And um, this guy just asked me some questions, and I was talking about um, about how God, you know, if I drove my bus, I was going to wreck. So I had to listen to God, you know, Amen. that I had to let him drive my bus. And mm-hmm. something spoke to Alicia. She was inside at the moment, you know, and she came out, and she had told me that God said, if I said one more thing, you know, because I was really talking about God, that for her to come out, and God spoke to her, and she came out to me. And that opened a long line of um, of a relationship mm. that has been the most the, the most best thing that that God has ever blessed me with in a very long time. A pastor like PK, um, I mean, he gives me blessings all the time. But I'm just so truly blessed that I have his support and guidance and love. And um, uh, New Life Christ Central was very important to me and was there for me for 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 like um probably i want to say it was probably over a year until they closed up because it was like over that summer and that winter and then through another um summer and Mm -hmm. then that winter they had to close when he moved to pennsylvania and um and um 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 financially you know sometimes it's really really tough you know sure sure Sure. Well, I, you know, praise I mean, God that he has had and his wife have had the impact that they've had in your life and that, you know, through them, Jesus has become a cornerstone in oh your life. Goodness. Oh, my that goodness. Is, oh, yeah. That is awesome. Oh, yes. Because it's what is so funny is he was saying how, you know, when he closed the church, you know, he said, you know, I know God speaks to me about who we, you know, you know, that there, there's still relationships that, that I stay close to. Mm-hmm. And um, I reach out to him because, Mm -hmm. you know, I've been through a whole lot in my life as far as, you know, the drinking and the drugs and and, and gel and and, um, and just just the different, the dysfunctional family, you know, with, with, um, I just can relate to PK. Mm. Um, But this man, right, this man is, is like awesome, so awesome to me that I wish I could just you know, give everybody him, you know. I mean, I wish I could just spread it. I, not, I talk to so many people about him. <laughs> Amen. I well, it's, you, it's you, all, you have it's, just endorsed him in front of uh, several thousand people that will hear this, so uh, wish comes true. <laughs> Amen. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you want to say anything? Yeah, well, you know, the whole thing is, is give him a chance because he's so awesome, you know? Mm. Um, and I can teach him a few things every now and again, but that's rare, you know? <laughs> um, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we'll get to talking and we don't even know it. And then all of a sudden there's, there's Bible study. Mm-hmm. I can ask him different things. He taught me about boundaries with, through the book of Nehemiah. Amen. I mean, we um, recently was talking about Nahum, and now you know God sent the ravens and um, and kings. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and and Isaiah. I mean, I was just reading to my friend that's listening to the program. You know, Isaiah forty three. Um, mm-hmm. I was telling her, you know, God is just so real, and and you know, sometimes we just want to give it away. You know, we just want to just give people that spiritual that spirituality and, and that feeling that when God comes in you and just makes you feel woo woo all right. <laughs> and um, you know, I remember listen, listen, I remember something, I'll go back to it. I don't know if I'm live and if I'm not, that's okay. But oh, you're lost. would um 
that's I want to, PK would go and maybe you'd have to tell me to shut up because I will sing his praises all day long. Okay, but, but we're um, going to give you another minute. <laughs> okay, one more minute. Then I then then good, 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 good. This is the minute I'm going to talk about faith. Mm-hmm. My pastor um, spoke of faith one week and another week and another month, and all of a sudden everybody's going. I mean, another week on faith. Mm. I never realized. You know, even me, I mean, I just kept listening to him because, and the, and the singing, I mean, it's just awesome. I, I never realized until, you know, time after not being with him and being around him, what, what he really, what that was all about. Without faith, you have nothing. That's true. Without faith, you have nothing. Well, well thank you nothing. so much for calling in, singing his phrases, you know, and uh, endorsing his ministry. That, that, that's powerful. And I appreciate you listening in. And, uh, he right? Is he there? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. I'm right here, Angie. You are here. Yes. Hey, Pastor, I didn't say I didn't tell my stories. <laughs> okay. You know, okay. I had to I had to pull the God card. Remember? Okay. Yes. You, we gonna we gonna yeah, leave yeah. that in, in in the cupboard for a while. <laughs> okay. But, oh, we're, will, oh, oh, we're gonna talk about. Oh, oh, yeah. That's just a little thing between me and PK. But yeah, listen, I okay. pray to God. And I thank you for everything. I didn't mean to, I really wasn't trying to talk live. I just, I, but I did want to let you know exactly what this man is all about. And he's about God. And he's, and he's, and he's like, whew, mm-hmm. he's all there. He's all thank there. You. So, you know, Amen. and so I thank you for, for, uh, you got me live. I don't know what I sound like. Probably like a North Carolina hick, but anyway, <laughs> to God be the glory. Right. To, well, to God, God bless. be the glory. Thanks, thanks for all calling. Right. Thanks, Angela. Oh, anyway. praise God, Kevin. That, that, that's pretty awesome, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so here we're back in your story. And I want you to go ahead and talk about your entrance into the drug world. Let's just pick up right there. Um, I, uh, I hooked up with a, with a guy that's like a family friend mm. because um, it was this, this drug dealer who um, – captivated the whole area name you mentioned his name everybody knew who he was and he lived right across the street and the family friend knew him and the the guy got a bunch of people together like a family he says you know uh back in those days people was identified or the product was identified by the cap the color the color of the bag the color of the cap whatever it was but this guy says, no, we all family. There's not going to be a separation. All the caps is going to be the same color. You know, so I'm, I'm with this family friend. I'm like his soldier. And, you know, we all living large and, you know, spending money, buying sneakers and everything is going. We think everything is going good, you know, and uh, he uh, like if. I had some left. The guy over there who was like a brother in the organization, he would run his customers to me. We all finished. And after we all finished, now we all can go out and party. Mm. Okay. You know, you know, we so come back. System. Yeah. Yeah. We had a system. We all, nobody's going out. We all going out at the same time and we all can help each other because it's the same product. It's not a different product. The same thing you get from me is what you're getting from him. You just have some type of relationship with him that that's his customer. But he don't mind doing me a favor because we family. We fa- we, we lifting each other up. Amen. You know, but in the wrong way. You know, there's times where people was coming at the block and would be shooting and I'm running oh my gosh. towards the telephone pole or the telephone booth. And all of a sudden, I hear ting, 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 ting. The bullets is hitting exactly where I'm running. Mm. So not pay- if I would not have been paying attention, I would have ran into a line of fire. Wow. I turn back the other way and run over there. Other this times, you know... Somebody might do something to one of the family members and we take care of business. You know, didn't have a problem. This is our castle. You come in here, 
wrong, we gonna handle you. Wow. You know, and people would come back and they would they would come back shooting. Wow. You know, I remember another incident where they were shooting at us, and I'm I'm a you you see, I'm kind of small guy. <laughs> I was always fast. Playing uh-huh. basketball, I would run past the basketball. That's mm. how fast I was. You know, so I feel somebody grabbing me, you know, to try to get away. Mm. We all in the building touching each other, you know, touching our, our parts to make sure we not shy. You know, so um, getting back to uh, the organization. So that's how the organization was, was organized or was ran. Now, you know, so, if, uh, I can, if I can interject right here. I want to explore something with you because you said you grew up, you knew about church. You had yes. a God thing from, from y- your youth. And that, now you've entered the drug world. Now, what is that dichotomy like where you are growing up, you're, teen, you're knowing God, because I want you to speak to some people right now. There are people that are doing this, what you're talking about they're doing. They know God, and they're in the drug game, and, and they know what it's like to be shot at. And, but they know it's like to get shot at Saturday night and be in church Sunday morning. Talk about that uh, for a minute. Um, it's, only, it's only one one thing I can say to that. Okay. You can't serve two gods. <laughs> you, can't, you can't straggle the fence. Mm. There's, no, there's, there's no way. You, you can be in church one day and be out in the street, it can happen, but your heart is only going to be in one place, really. And whatever you're doing, you know, you're going to have, like God says, you know, I'd rather you not, I'd rather you just be hot. Don't be hot. Don't be cold and hot. Uh, he said, if you're cold, I'm going to spill you out my mouth. If you lukewarm, I'm going to spill you out, out my mouth. So it's like two Negatives against one positive. There's only one way to go. You know, the, yeah. the way to life is, is narrow. That's true. But destruction is a wider variety of things you can get into. So let, let me just get this straight for all of those. that Okay. It is not okay to sell drugs. And run the streets and go to church on Sunday. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's, it's not going to work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just want to clear not, that up because sometimes people get confused. And I, I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm not talking about tr- struggling. I'm talking, you know what you're doing. Mm. You know you almost got caught the other day. But you back in church. God is trying to give you a warning because I had warnings before they came and arrest me. I had plenty of warnings. And for somebody to tell you, oh, God never gave me a warning, they sit, they lying to you. Because God is a just God and he's a fair God. He loves you even in your wrong. And he's going to tap you on your shoulder to let you know, stop. The choice is yours. Wow. So you, 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 you're getting into this thing, man. And now you got money. Why don't you talk about the weight that money has in this whole life. You, you can, everybody won't be your friend when you have money. Yes. Yes, they even, do. Even if they don't like you, they still won't be your friend <laughs> because the person with the money is the one who's has it going on. That's the bottom line. They want to be in the spotlight like you, you know, uh, I'm a, I am kind of speed it up. Um, so just like in ministry, you go through stages, you go through dry stages, you go through uh, abundant stages, you know, mediocre, whatever. You go through the same stages in, in, the, in the game. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing, but it's just on a, it has a negative twist to it. You know, um, you, mm-hmm. you click up with different people and you find your real niche. You know, because that lasted for for uh, a long time. Then after that dried up, it's like, Elijah, I got to go find another well. Where else to go? You know, there's no more raven coming here to feed me. And, and the brook done dried up. I have to find 
somewhere else. So you make a you you find somebody who's doing that. Mm -hmm. And even though you may have been on bigger than them before, but just in order to get in, you might have to humble yourself and got to get under his leadership. Gotcha. So, you know, so I, I found a guy that, you know, uh, that I was I grew up with. We went to the same boys club and, you know, he was he was doing his thing and I I clicked up with him. And mm. I showed him I was faithful in what I was doing. Okay. I know I know this game. And uh I proved myself and he he let me run the organization. Wow. You know, uh he found a a place out of town that he trusted me enough and he would send me out to take care of business. Now we're gonna find another location. We need to grow, you mm. know, just like a pastor. You know, he get one church that thrives. He get another church. <laughs> He's trying to dominate the atmosphere. The drug dealer is doing the same thing. Wow. The more spots he can get, the more he can help and get people into his organization to build it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I... uh. I hooked up with this guy and, you know, I start going out of, out of town and stuff like that. And the first yeah. time I went out of town, uh, I lost, uh, about $15,000 because these guys knew I didn't really know the tricks and the trades to that town. Mm -hmm. So they told me the police coming, the police coming. So I get the drugs out of the house. And I put them in a stash. There wasn't no police coming. They just wanted me to get the drugs out so they can get a, a little piece of the pie. Oh, I lost $15,000 wow. in a matter of a couple of, th a couple of hours. You know, but you $15,000 is nothing to, to 200000 250000 That's nothing. You know, I took a, took a nice hit on the head. You know, that just meant, you know, I couldn't. We couldn't get the expensive car that we, we was planning on getting. Not this time, but maybe the next trip. You know, so I learned how to, okay, they got me this time, but I'm not going to. You know, it's like the devil gets you. Mm -hmm. and you say, okay, I see how you got me. You won't get me again. So it was the same thing. Okay, I see how that happened. It won't mm -hmm. happen again. And I kind of capitalized on it where I would get another apartment and I would have everything over there. And anytime anybody wants something, I would have a, I would have enough for that day. I wouldn't mm -hmm. have no drugs where I'm at either, mm -hmm. because I knew, I, I I learned I learned from that already. Wow! So you you you're learning and growing in the drug game. <laughs> that's that's just a terrible place. So so when this thing is happening, you lose fifteen thousand dollars. I mean, are you still a teenager at this point in time? Yes. Wow. Okay. All right. Yes. Wow. You know, um, so, um, I, okay. I'm, yes. Okay. So, so, so you're still a teenager and that, I mean, you've come, you, you grew up in the projects. Now you're dealing with lots of money. I mean, comparatively from what, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you, maybe your dad's business might have brought in legitimately and so forth. Right. Um, and, and, you know, you, you've been discipled for, for lack of a better term into a position <laughs> of some trust, you know, that now they trust you, they're giving you more territory and so forth. What, what, what do you see happening inside of you in the midst of this process? Your morals, your outlook on life, What's going you know, on? Didn't matter no more. Ooh. It, you, I'm going to be honest. It didn't matter no more. Because now, uh, I, have, I, have an, I have a name. I'm affiliated with a, a group, an organization that's known for people that, that people want to be them. You know, so... Uh, I have money, you know, we would go on great adventure trips, you know, and to, uh, to spend that $5,000 wasn't, wasn't nothing. It, it, 
That wasn't nothing. You know, there was times where uh, after, you know, bringing in all the revenue and all the work and all the stuff is gone, I'm, I'm missing $10,000, $5,000 and couldn't tell you where it went. Nobody took the money. It just went so fast. It came so fast and went so fast. I lost calculation of um, where it went. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. So, so, so here you are in your life. Those of you that have been listening, <clears throat> we're, 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 this is Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. We've been talking with Kevin Middleton about his life, how he ended up in the drug game. Now, we're just about at the top of the hour. What this means is we're about to take a break. When we come back from break, uh, so, so you know, uh, we don't we don't keep you for a solid two hours. <laughs> we can all relax for a few minutes. Uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to continue on Kevin's story into his downward spiral. Ultimately, how he got arrested and sentenced not to five years, not to ten years, sentenced for life. And how God began to work in his life and redeem him out. So don't leave. Come back and uh, be with us in the second hour of Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. Your life dreams are shattered. You're gone away. We've cried here for hours. Hours turn to days We know you regret this Leaving us here With portraits and memories That we've held so dear When I hear
And we are back on Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. Thank you for those of you that are listening. Uh, we've been having quite a wild ride uh, talking with Kevin, talking about his journey and all of his experiences. We're going to jump right back into his story. So, uh, Kevin, uh, thanks again for being with us tonight. What I want to let you jump right into now is because uh, you've given us quite a picture here of what it was like for you. And I, and I know that a lot of people can just attach right to themselves place themselves right in your story because your story is many people's story and 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 this path that you were on the drug game and going deeper gaining territory making money so forth led you on a path that ultimately led to conviction getting sentenced to life why don't you take us on that journey from where we've left off okay um i i started to expand territory through friends and stuff. And um, it was great. There was some ups and downs. And uh, I don't know. It'd be People start getting caught. Houses start getting raided. And these people, uh, with the, you know how the Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let it, let it be established? Mm -hmm. Well, the federal government has the same system. If we can find two people that will say the same thing, we're going to bring an indictment. So they brought an indictment. They, you know, after people get caught, they, they don't want to do the time. And, you know, they look into swap spots with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, some, somebody from the project had got in contact with my sister and told my sister uh, because they was arrested. They was arrested. They said, tell your brother, watch out. They watching him. But, you know, that didn't really register to me. So I just kept on doing it. And then it started getting hot. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had to separate myself because this is not ending good. So I dispersed from the organization, but I still was kind of in touch with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after the houses, houses and stuff started getting raided, they had enough evidence. So um, I heard that a friend got um, arrested. Mm. So one thing about my organization, yes. me are... The boss didn't know where each other lived mm -hmm. because somebody kidnapped you and looking for me, you won't know to tell them. And gotcha. if it costs you your life, so be it. That was on both sides. You know, so uh, I went away to my, my, my apartment and mm -hmm. uh, I was, I went somewhere else. And start dealing drugs. I disassociate, me, disassociate myself with this group of people to, to connect with another group of people that was doing the same thing, but in a different place where I was a new face. Okay. You know, so it's kind of like uh, moving around. Yeah. And once I knew they, I was getting ready to buy a car and... I found out that they was looking for me and the way that the federal government uh, police agency can locate mm -hmm. you is by what you drive. Sure. They said, oh, he's driving this or he's driving that. Oh, he just bought this. Now it's easy to find you. So I just said, you know what? I'm, a, I'm not going to buy that car right now. I'm going to lay low. And one day I... Uh, I was home waiting for somebody to come see me. Mm -hmm. They were taking too long. So what I did was I went outside for a little breather, figure out, you know, I'll catch them on their way up to my house. And while I'm on the corner sitting on the crate with all my boys, we just cooling out. I had just had a friend that was killed two days that I had just talked to him an hour before they killed him and told him, you know, I'll be back. 
he had just got killed. So the police, I'm sitting on the crate. The police comes up to me, show me gold badge. Show, you know, there's a difference between yeah. the feds and the state. The feds have a gold badge. The state has a silver badge. Wow. So they said, okay. they said, Kevin Middleton. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. They said, stand up. Uh, they showed me their badge and they said, we have a warrant for your arrest. Wow. And, you know, like I told you before, I was, I was a fast person. I know how to run. <laughs> the area. But I'm thinking they, it didn't register these was the federal government. This, I thought it was the regular police. Mm -hmm. And it was coming to question me about my friend that got killed because me and him was close. Hmm. So, I, okay, I go with you. And when I get down to the station, I realize, hold on, this is not the precinct. And once I, it's everything start to register, oh my God. You know, I'm like, what in the world I done got myself into? Hmm. You know, so uh, mm -hmm. I got me a lawyer. The lawyer said, don't say nothing to nobody. I don't care. Don't say anything. So um, I said, okay. So I met when they put me in the cell. The guy's cell that was right across from me was one of the guys who was part of the organization. So he seen me. He said, how in the world you get in here? What, what happened? And I, I'm saying, I'm not saying nothing to him because mm -hmm. I knew my lawyer told me, don't say nothing to nobody. And I'm going to listen to him. Okay. You know, so uh, I, I get in there and uh, things start to settle down. I start to realize, you in trouble. As they was bringing me to the federal building, they told me, you're not going to see the streets for a long time. And I was kind of like a smart, smart guy. I mm -hmm. always said something smart back. Or sarcastic, mm -hmm. you know, because there was a state case that I had that I beat the state. Oh and wow! They had came up to me when I was on the in the on the phone, and they say, "Hey, hey, Kevin, how you doing? We ain't been seeing you for a while. You know where you been?" And me, I got a smart mouth. You know, I'm I'm in I'm somewhere else, man. You know, I'm doing me. You know, y'all know how I do. You know, matter of fact, don't talk to oh, me. No. Talk to the lawyer. That I beat you in the state with. Oh. And I gave them my back and I walked away from them. And I know they were saying, okay, we gonna get him. Oh. You know, you, you think you can't be touched because money gets you out of one situation, but when you get to the federal level, the federal government, they have money. So they can play that money game right with you. So wow. I, I'm in there, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I said, oh my God, what I'm going to do. So I, I call my house and I talk to my sister and she said, you know what you got to do? I said, I can't go to God right now because of all the stuff I've done. I hmm. shot people before I cut people before I did this. I did that. Hmm. I, I can't. He's not going to listen to me anyway. You know, she said, I don't know what to tell you. you. I told you what to do. So I start going to church and I, uh, it was a Catholic church in the, oh, in the wow. prison. You know, so I start going to the Catholic church. I need help. And so was this, what, uh, I'm sorry to uh, interrupt. It, it, right now you're in, you're in prison. Yes. Yes. Um, were you already sentenced at this point, or no? Was, no. no. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm I'm in the process of getting a lawyer to fight with fight the case and figure out what do they have on me. Okay. Do they have me okay. on camera? Do they have me on tape? Do they have me with drugs? What What is the evidence against me? Sure. You know, so I'm going to church, and um, I start, they gave me some rosary beads that, you know, the, the priest gave me some rosary beads and gave me a little catalog, a brochure, and I'm, I'm reading it and I'm praying the rosary beads. Got the rosary beads in my, I'm praying it three times a day. I'm faithful. I'm trying to get out of here. And 
God knew my heart. Mm -hmm. It's not beads, it's the Bible. That's right. That's get you out of there. Thank you. You know, you can you can do them beads, you can rub them beads until they disappear. That's not gonna get you out of here. It's a relationship, not religion. That's right. So um a guy came up to me, a friend of friend I met in there, and he said, Man, I can get you out. And I said, Well, how you gonna do that? What, what what's good? How we gonna do how we gonna work this? And he says, I have a, a voodoo friend, you know. At your permission, I could give them your name and so on and so forth. And, you know, they can, you know, put this potion together or whatever, work their magic, and you can get out of here. I said, oh, okay, okay. And just in my heart, because mm -hmm. I was connected to God at a point in time, I knew that was like spitting in God's face. Yes, that's, that is spitting that's in God's making, face. Making a deal with the devil. Just in my heart. I didn't have no relationship with God. God never spoke to me before, but I knew inside that was wrong. And, you know, an interesting thing, what you're saying there. One of the things the Bible says is that the sin of rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Yes. Very interesting. But please continue. You know, so uh, I never... Never made the connection with them because I knew it was wrong. And I, mm -hmm. you know, just in, in, in my spirit, I just knew you're going to have to work this one out. You know, so I, I denied them and God moved me upstate, took me out of New York and moved me upstate New York. So I get to that church and I get into an organization that called Promise Keepers. I know everybody heard of Promise Keepers. Yeah. So they had a revival and I'm trying to learn this thing and, you know, but they, they didn't have what it took to fulfill what I was looking for. Not saying anything bad about them, but they just wasn't the niche that God was trying to connect me with. So um, after that, some people start coming in and they start holding a Bible study. So they holding a Bible study and it's still was like boring. It still didn't have that, that fire to it. Amen. So after that, uh, a group of people, a group came in from another prison and it was a selected few that was from that prison who was born again, Holy Ghost filled, tongue speaking, fire spitting believers. Mm. And I, I don't, I call God the master. There's orchestrators, but God is the master orchestrator. Amen to that. He knows how to orchestrate you right into the place you need to be. You just have to be patient to get there. So these people come in and they 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 set they set the prison on fire. It was like Mount Horab, the mountain of God. I, that's when I started, I started going to their service. They didn't tolerate no foolishness. I seen God working. And one of the brothers, you know, took an interest in me. He says, you know, I had a, like, uh, there was a little cold going on with me. Mm -hmm. And he said, brother, you want to get rid of that cold? I said, yes, I do. Yes, sir. He said, bring your Bible out to the yard and we're going to get rid of that cold. I'm like, okay. So I come out to the yard. I had a paperback Bible. And they just took the Bible and just wrote all in it. Wow. Just wrote all in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this guy, this is my Bible. What are he doing? He's writing a whole bunch of scriptures. So I start, you know, getting into reading the Bible more. And I would, I thought the more you read the Bible, the more you would understand. <laughs> but that's not the case with God. Okay. God is on a timetable. And... I'm reading five, say I'm reading five chapters a day of the Bible and, and I'm reading the book of Revelations okay. as a new beginner. <laughs> Great place to start. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm bragging to myself. I read five chapters of Revelation. Boy, I did something, man. And I can hear the spirit of God say, and what did you read? Mm. And I'm sitting there looking profound, looking crazy. And puzzled, like, what do you mean what I read? What did you understand in them five chapters? 
I don't know. He didn't read nothing. So God taught me, read the Bible. Don't read it just to get through it. Read it to understand it. Amen. And all you're getting, get understanding, get knowledge, get wisdom. You're not getting wisdom trying to, this is not, you know, a, a race. <laughs> it's not won by the strong. It's not, you know, it, it's not won by in, into, intellect, intelligence. It's not won by any of that. It's won by the spirit. So what I did was I adjust and slowed down from reading. Mm. I'm reading and I, okay. And I'm getting better understanding. So what I do, it, I would read one chapter one day. Then I would go back the next day and read that same chapter. And mm -hmm. God was opening doors. I mean, the eyes, when the Bible talk about the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, That's right. I was enlightened. By just Ephesians reading, 1, folks. Huh? And I was just saying, that, that, that's Ephesians 1, folks. You know, eyes of your understanding. Yeah, so... I start getting more understanding, you know, start going to more church, more church services. And um, I had an uh, encounter with one of them Pakistani, Pakistanis, okay. um, Muslims from one of the, the official um, uh, how would I say it? Okay. Uh, were, were, they from another, were they from Pakistan or were they... Just yeah, they, he, he he was from Pakistan. Uh, uh, were, were they part of like the Muslim like a brotherhood, or is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. They, they was part of that. You know, um, I ran I ran into the um, the the bomber that bombed downtown Manhattan. I ran really? into uh, yeah, I ran into oh. all of them. The sheik, I I was on a uh, a visit with my lawyer. I seen him. I was. In contact with these guys. Now, you know? all of this is happening before you're even sentenced. Yes. Okay. You know. That's for the listeners. Go ahead. So, uh, I uh, get into a fight with him, and <laughs> he didn't want to take the tray. He didn't want to do his job. Mm. So, he would take the trays and he would dump the food. I had a banana or apple in one hand, and the other hand I had the tray, and it was I was supposed to give it to him. He didn't take it, so I just threw the tray. You know, I just threw the tray over there, and I went to walk past him, and he pushed me. I pushed him. He punched me in the face. I punched oh. him in the face. The police, my friends, Steve, see, start to see what's going on. They start to move towards us. And the police see something going on. He don't know what. But I knew if you start a fight in the cafeteria, your level of security will go up. That means less time that you're going to have in population. Sure. So I moved because I'm, I'm short. I moved through my friends and was halfway out the door. And the police grabbed him. The seal grabbed him. And he pointed right at me on my way out the door. And the police said, you, you, stop, stop. I don't know. I, I'm thinking now I should have kept walking. But I turned around. And next thing you know, they, 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 uh, they put me in the cafeteria. They took him to the captain's office, took him to the hospital, brought yeah, me out oh, of the, the cafeteria, brought me in the lieutenant's office, and asked me what happened. So the police said, you know, um, I think this guy was assaulted. I said, I wasn't assaulted. He said, yes, you are. I said, no, I wasn't. So they said, Middleton, go back to your cell. Just make sure nothing happened to him. If something happened to him, I'm coming to you. If something happened to you, I'm going to him. So I said, okay, don't worry about it. And as I took my, I went to my dorm and took my shower, I heard the keys walking towards my door. Mm -hmm. And it's quiet. Everybody's out. And the police opened the door and he said, they want you in the lieutenant office. I said, I just came back from there. He said, I don't know. You just got to, when I went there, they locked me up. So I was able to request my Bible and stuff. You know, I get in there and I repented to God. You know, Lord, I, w I was wrong for punching him in the face, but he was wrong for punching me in the face, too. Oh, my gosh. You know, but, so, Lord, so, so, so at this point in your life, you are, you know, God, you, you, you're walking with God, but you're walking out with a lot of, with a lot of bondage still holding on to you. Yeah. And, yes. uh, but, but, but God is with you at this point. Yes. And um, you already got, 
your your your, your uh, face turning back towards him. Um, and, and that, that's a fascinating story, and I'm sure you could tell us a ton, right? A ton of stories like this uh, while you were in prison and all this stuff. And um, yes, but uh, I want to kind of jump ahead at this point to to okay. uh, the actual point in time where the conviction occurred. Um, it ha- it happened uh, right there. Did it? As I'm in the cell, knowing I can't keep on doing this. I can't keep on making excuses because I had the right to swing or not swing. Mm. You know, so I, I get my Bible and I ask God to forgive me. And I get into the word and I start running into scriptures. You know, they gave me my Bible that the brothers wrote in. And I start looking at the scriptures that they had. Mm. And I grabbed the scripture out of Colossians 2, 14 and 15. And it says how he wiped out the handwriting requirements that was against you, which stood hostile against you, having nailed them to the cross and so on yeah. and so forth. So I, they gave me a ticket for what I did. And I mm-hmm. put that scripture against the ticket. A week later, they came to me and they asked me what happened. You know, I'm still calling a Christian. I lied to them. And uh, they uh, they said, okay, we're going to talk to you. They called me out. So uh, they said, Middleton, I don't, we don't know why we're going to do this, but we're going to let you out of segregation. Don't make an A out of us. We're just going to let you out. I said, don't worry about it. Now, God just showed me only thing I had to do, repent and stand on the scripture, mm. and he will come through. Wow. Look at so that. So once that happened, I said, I done tapped into the miracle. Wow. So once once I get out of segregation, you know, I get to, you know, um, to my to my cue, I take out my indictment for the other state case. I take out the indictment. For the federal case, and I pray that same scripture over both of those cases. Mm-hmm. Uh, God put me up under some people who are men of God, and they were showing me the ropes. And uh, a guy named um, James Field, and he he was he was teaching me. He was mm-hmm. showing me how to how to really do this thing. He started letting me listen to people he was listening to, Kenneth mm-hmm. Copeland, Creflo Dollar. You know, mm-hmm. and, and people like that. Mm-hmm. And I start seeing how this faith thing really works. And I grab a hold of that and I prayed that over, you know, but during that time, it was six years before I got sentenced. And in the feds, that's not possible. <laughs> you usually get sentenced right after trial. Two years tops, you're gonna after trial, you're gonna be there. I was there six years. Oh my gosh. So I seen miracles. I seen people hands that was curled up, crippled. I seen people l- lay hands on the hand and the hand open up. I seen people that had AIDS, got healed. God, that was like the mountain of Horeb. Wow. That's what God really revealed to me. He's wow. real. Amen so, to that. So I go to, I go to court. Uh-huh. And it's time to get sentenced. It's six years later. Mind you, I still have the case in in the other state, and I'm dealing with the federal case. So in the federal case, you know, I had on paper, usually once they put it on paper, it's it's a done deal. Mm -hmm. It's called the PSI. And my PSI said life. I didn't know how to handle that. Hmm. When I saw that paper and I seen that life on there, mm-hmm. I went to the yard and I, I walked around the yard and I said, God, what is this? I had one, sh- one shoe with laces, one shoe without lace. I had one sock on, one sock off, one leg up, one leg down, wrinkle cloth. I was discombobulated from the report. Wow. I didn't know I'm, I'm serving you now. How you let this happen? Not knowing I was going to be like Lazarus and said, this sickness is not unto death. God, uh-huh. I can hear God saying, this sentence is not unto life. Oh, wow. You know, wow. so uh, 
God work with me, you know, and I got myself together. I start fighting the case and I kind of went back to the natural for a minute mm. because mm. I, you know, sometimes you can, you can lean back to your own understanding and I start fighting the case the way they was fighting. They coming up with case law. I'm coming up with case law. I kind of put God to the side or on the shelf because he mm. wasn't working as fast as I wanted him to work. Mm -hmm. So I would get to court and I would put a motion together. I didn't learn how to, they started, I changed my name from Kevin to Frog because other people were coming to the jail. And if they know Kevin, Kevin who? Oh, Darsky and Kevin from over. Oh, I did some work with him. I'm going to look to get a ticket out on him. I'm going to tell about some stuff we did. So I changed my name. Wow. You, so wow. Um, they started calling me Lawyer Frog. The same way I did with, I found who was doing what I wanted to do. And I got up under him and me and him became close and he started teaching me case law. I knew how to put the cases together. I would send my, my lawyer cases and he would say, who did this for you? I said, I did it myself. And he said, come on, you kidding me. I, I said, I did that myself. That's my own handprint right there. Where do you get this stuff? I just searched it out. You know, so, so you were uh, you 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 were actively fighting your, your your sentencing at this point. Yes, and you were communicating with your lawyer. You you were. I mean, you you took the word that you got, which is that this sen this sentencing is not unto life. But you were trying to handle it in the natural. Yeah, I'm trying to. You know, sometimes we we think we can help God out. We can do we can do a better okay. job. <laughs> okay. You know, we're going to help you out a little bit, Lord. You know, I'll make this thing happen a little faster. But um, I get to court. I get a sentence date. I get there. Um, mm -hmm. And they try to sentence me. I wasn't trying to get sentenced. So I use the case law to fire my lawyer. These are, you know, little tricks and trades that you learn. I fired my lawyer. They gave me another lawyer because the lawyer said, you know, the motion that I put, he said, oh, it doesn't have any merit. So the judge allowed me to talk to her and she should have never did that because I was like Moses. Mm. I, I quoted case law to her, just like you would quote scripture out of the Bible. Pastor would quote scripture out of the Bible. <laughs> and she looked at me and looked at my lawyer mm -hmm. and was like, how in the world did this man, we allow this man to get a foothold where he got me on record? Wow. And got me in a in a bind where he couldn't where she couldn't get out of because mm -hmm. what I said to her was true. This is your law. Mm. You know, so they dismissed the lawyer. I try to fight it still, and it didn't work. God said, I just let that happen for its reason. But everything else that I was doing was failing. Mm -hmm. So when that started failing, I said, that's when I oh God opened my eyes and I said, This is a wicked, wicked system. Oh, I'm using their stuff and they tell me I can't use it now. So I went back to the Bible. Mm. So I, I, I get sentenced. You know, I'm in the bullpens, get ready to get sentenced. My family there, they, they in there praying. I got some praying family. Mm -hmm. They in there praying for me. And I, uh, I'm in the bullpens speaking in tongues. <laughs> now that's <laughs> in front of everybody. Oh, wow. I'm trying to get, Daniel, you got to understand. I'm trying to get home. Yeah. I don't yeah. care about what they looking at me. Because if this thing work, I'm going to be outside and they still going to be in there. Mm. So I'm praying in tongues and the power of God saturate my body. Oh, wow. And I, I know they thought I was crazy. When, when the power of God hit me, I mm. said, he here, he here in front of prisoners. Wow. And they, they probably think I'm crazy. But God was showing me, I'm with you, son. I get in there. I say my testimony, and the judge still sentenced me. She don't give me the life. She gave me 14 years. Wow. But I was in a trance. I heard her say something, and it was like I was there, but I wasn't there. Wow. That in, the words that she said didn't touch me at all. Mm -hmm. Only thing, and you know what I told my family? I asked the judge... Can I talk to my family? You know what I told my family? Hmm. I said, I, to I told my family, I said, he's not finished yet. He's not finished yet. 
I was like a, a broken recorder. He's not finished. I don't know what made me say that. <laughs> I know that. Was I, I have an idea. <laughs> but please. You know, so uh, I get back. I get sentenced. Um, I, 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 I bugged out for a little while. Because now I'm saying how in the world did I got now I don't came down off the high of the Holy Ghost. And now I realize how much time I got. Mm. How am I going to do this? I had six years in and the only thing I got to do is six more. I'm on, I'm downhill, but I, that's, that's a long time still. You know, so, uh, <clears throat> I get back to upstate New York. I'm all right. I just back. Okay, Lord. Okay, what, what what you got going on? And I was able to minister to a, a correction officer. Mm -hmm. I'm ministering to him. He comes up to my room, and I'm talking about how what God does. And he says he was like the man in the book of the prison, the the God in the book of Acts. We said, okay. what, what must I do to be saved? Okay, okay. This guy raises his hand out of nowhere while while I'm ministering to him and say, what must I do to be saved? Mm. A CEO, wow! A, a security, uh, uh, not a security, but a, a officer of that prison. Look at that! He gets saved. I start giving him all type of material, and I said, <laughs> after he got saved, I said, "Lord, if this was the reason for you bringing me back here, so oh. be it." This man just got saved, so uh, I I get sentenced. I go to another prison, and there God start ministering to me. I got a magazine from Kenneth Hagen, and he was saying, you know, exercise your faith every day. Do something. Believe God for something every day. If it's small, big, just keep your faith out there. Mm -hmm. So he said, because the devil will say, you better not do that. The devil will say, you better not open that can of worms. The devil would say, you better not try that. And I said, that's exactly what I was hearing in my mind when I was dealing with the other case, because I know the other case has to be dealt with. Mm. Okay. So God was saying, go and challenge that paper. Wow. You're already standing on the scripture. Just keep standing on it. I, I went up there. I, 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 I'm not going to tell you. I went up there a little shaky, shaky. Mm-hmm. I didn't go up there all bold like Shat Rat Meshack and the Bendigo. Do what sure. you gonna do, King. Ain't nothing to talk. I didn't go like that. So I went up there and I was I knew I was taught through Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, uh, and other people that you have to watch your words. That's so I didn't want to be snared by my words. So I went up to the desk and I said, My name is Kevin Middleton. I would like to see if there's anything in my file. Mm -hmm. They said, okay. So they pulled my file out and they said, oh, there's nothing here. No hand up, New Hanover County. There's nothing there. I said, okay, thank you. And when I walked out of there, man, I thought I could touch the, the sky. Wow. It's gone. I had, Daniel, I had the indictment in my hand. And, and that's, uh, that. When, I remember when you told me this when we were sitting down. Where did it go? I mean, he said, how does Something become nothing. Daniel, there's a scripture. Amen, that's bro. In, that's in Corinthians, First Corinthians, um, uh -huh. chapter twenty-eight, and it says, and this is the Amplified Bible, and it says, and God also selected, deliberately chose what in the world is low-born, insignificant, and branded, and treated with contempt. Even the, here go the part right here. Even the things that are nothing that he might dispose and bring to nothing the things that are. Wow. So he took something that was there and made nothing out of it. Just like God can take nothing and make something. So what, what you're saying is that when we have done everything in our power to destroy our lives and rack up all kinds of accusations against ourselves that it's within the power of God 
to erase all of that by the blood of Jesus? Daniel, the scripture I was standing on, that's in Colossians 2, 14 and 15. When I was in that cell because I was fighting, uh -huh. this is when the scripture, the scripture spoke to me. I'm going to read it to you. And I want you, you it'll answer your question. The scripture, <laughs> say, the scripture says, have been canceled and blocked out and wiped away the handwriting of notes, <sighs> bonds, and with its legal, listen, legal decrees and demand, which was in force and stood against us as being oh, Christians, gosh. hostile to us. The notes with its regulations and decrees and demand, he set aside and cleared completely out of our way by nailing it to his cross, not just a regular cross, but his cross. God, to his 15, God disarmed the principal teeth and powers that were raged against us and made a bold display, public example of them and triumphing over them in him and in it, the cross. Brother, that, that right there is some power. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, that right there is some hope. Uh, that right there, as a matter of fact, is a testimony to the power of Jesus. You know, one thing I always do, I'm a word man. Uh -huh. So I'm going to stick as close to the word as I can. So I'm saying, okay, I stood on this scripture, but Lord... There's nothing new under the sun. I know you, this has, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let me see something. And he took me to a scripture that was in, uh, where was the scripture? It was in Kings, I think chapter five, where okay. they was looking for Elijah. And they walked up to Elijah and Elijah said, oh, I know where the guy that you're looking for is at. And Elijah took them to a place, and then Elijah, first he prayed that God closed their eyes, then he prayed that God opened their eyes, and when God opened their eyes, they realized that they was in the devil's territory. So uh, the king, God's people, says, Elijah, you, you want us to kill him now? You want us to kill him? Let us, let's, let, let's, let's do, do away with him. And Elijah said, no, let's feed them, then send them away. And the Bible said God, people never had problems with that group of people anymore. Hmm. So I knew once I seen that in the Bible, I knew that God can blind eyes. It could wow. be there, but you won't see it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That's powerful, brother. That is powerful. And, and you know, this is. This right here is really a, a climax point because this is where everything turns around. And we know now, now you are an ordained minister of God, serving the same God that delivered you out of all this mess. And if yeah. you could do it, and if God could do it for you, God could do it for somebody else. The Bible said he's no respect as a person. <sighs> and if, if I, want, I want to back up just a bit. Please. Just, just for four minutes. I should have seen the call on my life way before me coming home. Mm. My, my thing was, I'm going to come home, find me a job, let God bless me with a job, tie offer to any ministry, whatever, and just live a blessed life. I was the type of person who was sitting in the back of the class and didn't want to be called on. I didn't know mm. God was calling me to be this person, this man, this apostle. You know, uh, there was time where God set me up under people. And he would tell them to let him teach Bible study. So I would teach Bible study. God would tell this guy that's speaking, let him open up in prayer or let him give a word of exhortation. Then when I went to, I'm, I'm on my way home now. I'm in the congregation. The path, they had a chapel there that would come in every Sunday. 
So I would just come in there. You know, I'm I'm still a guy in the back of the class. Don't call on me. I'm going to get the word and I'm going to let God work the word. One day, the pastor didn't come in. So I would usually set my Bible down and I would go out and then I would come back when the pastor get there. He never comes. He's late. So the brothers in the church got together and they came up to the TV room where I was at. And they said, brother, we want you to give the word. I mm. said, no, nah. I said, no, nah, brother, man, you know, I, I, I don't have a word. I, I, I haven't been studying and, you know, I, I don't have no teaching or no sermon. But mind you, as I'm saying, no, I'm walking down to the church. So I get in the church and we praising God and we praising God. And I'm like, OK, we praising God for a long time. Maybe they're not going to say nothing. They're not going to say, but they say, OK, we're going to turn the service over to Brother Kevin. So I get up there. I make an excuse. I don't have nothing right now, but and I, I let it go. I teach the sermon and brothers was asking me for notes and all that stuff after the sermon. <laughs> and I'm like, and God spoke to me about a scripture that's in Matthew where it was a father and he had two sons. He told one son, go do this. And the son said, OK, I'm going to do it, but never did it. Then he had another son that it was the opposite. Yeah. He said, no, he ain't going to do it. You know what I'm saying? So yes. God showed then, me you were the one who said no, but you did it anyway. Yes. See, and like, the father like was I more said, pleased. I'm a, I'm a word man. I'm looking mm. for it in the word. That's how I know God is real. Because he's going to show me whatever he's doing in my life. He's going to show it to me in the word. That's why I got to stay in the word. If I don't stay in the word, I get lost. I'm going to tell you, Daniel, my saying for okay. 15 years are over. If sin will keep you away from the Bible or the Bible will keep you away from sin. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Um, Kevin, we have about 15 minutes left in the program. Now, for those of you that are listening and have been listening to this uh, program thus far, I want to, again, open up the, the call lines. If anyone wants to call in, uh, ask our guests a question, say anything about how this program may have uh, touched their lives. Uh, I know that we, before the program, Kevin, um, and, and if we don't get any other calls for the rest of the program, then we'll just you know, kind of hash this back and forth for the next 15 minutes. But I know that uh, before the program, you had a, 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 a friend – that was planning on being with us for the last part of the program. Yes. Um, now, uh, I don't see him in our call switchboard, so uh, not sure what's going on there, but um, call lines are open, folks. And Kevin, uh, in, the, in, in the last 15 minutes, uh, granted no one else calls in, uh, I want to let's talk about this word thing for a little bit. I, I want to talk about this word thing because, you know, what what people don't understand is that the Bible says, in the beginning the word was with God and the word was God, and it says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and a lot of people don't understand that. The Word being the man Jesus Christ and His Word being what has been given to us in the Bible both have the inherent mandate to be manifest. Yes. In other words, that God intends for His Word to make an imprint on this world. Everything. To change things. Everything is the Word. If you don't have the word, you don't have God. You know, you spoke about, you know, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word, you know, became flesh and, you know, and dwelt among us, you know, and that word was Jesus. Mm. Um, I, oh, I'm, I'm a type of person that I like revelation. I'm a reveler. Mm -hmm. And I'm always, I'm looking, I'm trying to squeeze the word, the Revelation out of every sentence, out of every word, that's how I am. Amen. Um, I think it's John 
1633, it says, In him we will have peace, but in the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I overcome the world. Right? Now, if he's the head and we the body, we overcome the world as well. Yeah. That's one revelation. The other revelation is, it says, In him we will have peace. Who's him? In the word. We will have in Jesus, we will have peace. Who's Jesus? Jesus is the word. So you can translate it and say, in Jesus, we will have peace. But be of good, but but in the world we will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. He has overcome the world, or we have overcome the world. So everything is in him. Kenneth Hagen has a book out that, that says, uh, mm -hmm. in him. <laughs> Everything is in him. If you get Jesus in it, it's in the word. You know, now faith is the substance of things, hope for, everything not seen, but by it, the elders obtain a, a good report, and so on and so forth. The word is faith. So I want to put it like this. Okay. It says that if you look at Hebrews 11, I think it's in 3, verse 3, it says, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. Yes. So if we understand by faith, the world was framed by the word of God. What is the word of God? It's power. But the worlds were framed by the word of God. We understand by faith. Let me put it this way. We understand that by the word of God, the worlds were framed by the word of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How did God put this world together, Daniel? By his words. Let there be light. That's right. And, and you know, this, is, this goes right back down, right? Because it funnels back down. And, and this is what believers need to get. That the same way that God is a speaking spirit and that God is created by his word, you know, he has designed us to operate in the same functionality, the same capacity. In other words, that we can stand on his word, speak his word, and watch things change. And, and this is a testimony that runs through your life story, especially when things got really hard. What God began to teach you, Kevin, is that when you apply his word and the promises that are found in the Bible to specific circumstances, that's when God's power got behind you. Yes. And that's when God's power gets behind us as believers, people that are listening to this program. Like, how do I get God on my side? How do I get God... God's power to begin to go at work. Well, apply the promises of his word to the situations that you find yourself in, and you'll find the creative power of God manifesting to recreate your circumstances. In other words, you were locked up, but now you're not. In other words, you were you know, on someone's hit list, now you're not. In other words, you, know, you were in debt, but now you're not. You know what, Applying Daniel? the promises of God's word. You know what, Daniel? Hmm. After a certain level, I, I would say to myself, I'm rolling with the big dogs now. Okay. Because I was in a different arena. I was rolling with people who was really getting money. Mm -hmm. So when God showed me life and death is in the power of the tongue, I said, if I spoke myself out, I'm going to speak myself. If I spoke myself in, I'm going to speak myself out. And that's what I did. I used his word to speak myself out. Really? <laughs> wow wow well it doesn't look like um, and, and you know I, I, I don't know what happened to um, the, the, the friend that you had that was supposed to call him but you know in the last 10 minutes because we got a few yes. uh, t 10 minutes left um, what I want to do I want to go through some of the ways God has blessed you since delivering you out of all this mess. In other words, you're now ordained. Oh. You have a wonderful wife. You have <laughs> touched lives. You have people calling in my show to endorse your ministry. right? And, and this is just what I know about because I just met you. Well, why don't you spend the next 10 minutes kind of glean for us. How has uh, God blessed you? But, but before you do that, I want to throw this out. Uh, www dot a new life ministry dot com for those of you that are listening that's kevin's website 
you can go there learn more about him. Now, uh, go ahead and you can talk for for all of um, us, Kevin. Before I before I left the penal institution, I would pray to God for a, for a wife. Okay. Because I I said, Lord, give me somebody who's gonna keep me in the kingdom because I know sometimes it can be hard. Okay. You know, the first day I came out, I went to go see my sister, and I met her friend, you know, and uh, me and her, got we got real close, and I, I, I married her. Wow. You know, um, and this was, uh, I knew she, were, she was the one I was praying for. Mm -hmm. You know, God spoke to me, and he let me know, he, it's like, he or he's like I said, he's the master orchestrator. You just have to walk into it, discern what it is, and move into it. Mm. You know, um, we had a bus ministry where I would teach the kids the Bible. I would have one kid read the Bible, and I would expound revelation on the Bible as I'm driving the bus. Mm. You know, then God opened the door for us to move to PA. And it, it was it, it was phenomenal because the way he set it up, you know, I prayed for four. I was praying for four years, thanking God for a house that I had no idea how I was going to pay for it, how I was going to get the money to pay for it. But he orchestrated everything on time. Amen. You know, it's 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 amazing. Wow. You know, you said something about. You know, the awesome testimony that I have. You can only get an awesome testimony when you serve an awesome God. Amen to that. You know. Uh, Amen to that. That's it. That's the bottom line. <laughs> if, you, if you are not in an awesome place, then maybe you're not serving an awesome God. Mm. And that doesn't mean material things because sometimes you can get in a situation where you will catch a drought. I'm not talking about catching droughts. Hey Amen. Well, here, here's the thing, man. We, we got a, just a few minutes left. What I want you to do, if there has been somebody listening to this program and you've heard Kevin talk about a God you want to know, but you don't know, I am going to let you, Kevin, tell them how they can know the Jesus, the God that you serve. You know, you may not believe that there's a God out there, but there is. Just look at nature. There's no ba big bang theories. Just ask God through Jesus Christ, the blood Death, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Just accept that and, and it happens. Don't look for no goosebumps. Sometimes you may get, you know, the spirit come through and, and brush up against you. But just ask Jesus Christ into your life. And from that point on, keep your eyes and your ears open for some strange things to happen. When I say strange, see, the world look at God as, you know, upside down. But no, the world is upside down, and God is the right way he's supposed to be, right side up. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Kevin. Well, folks, you've been listening to Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. We're just about out of time. So before we close the program, I, one, I want to thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us tonight for sharing with us uh, wisdom, your experiences, for opening up as much as you have, kind of letting us see not only uh, the, the things that God has done, but some of the ugliness that, that, that real life produces in real people. And, and, yeah. and, and so that we can identify, see ourselves in your story, and also see ourselves in your redemption. Um, so I want to thank you so much. I, I also want to remind those that are listening, again, the month of April is going to be Wounded by Leadership Month. 
In other words, we are going to spend the entire month addressing the issue of what happens when injurious spiritual leadership happens. Those of you that have a story, get in touch, www.bridemovement.com. Contact me. Send me your story. I'm going to be selecting some. I'm going to have people on. Those that get selected, you're going to get a free signed copy of Wounded by Leadership. And uh, uh, we're also going to have open phone lines every program for those that simply want to share what's going on in their life, live coaching with me. And so be looking out for that next week, Tuesday. We're launching it, 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern. Join us. Uh, and with that said, God bless you all. Thank you again so much, Kevin, for being on. You've been listening to Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. Good night. Good night. To the grave, I know pain is just a place. The will's been broken. Don't let the fear become the hate. Don't take the sadness to the grave. I know the fight is on the way. When the signs have been shown, since we never leave. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.